Welcome to today's edition of Weathering the Storms of Life with the Rains. This is Rob Rains, Sally Tippett Rains with you here as we come for you from our home office studio here as we have been since uh, the quarantine began and the stay-at-home orders in St. Louis County. So hopefully everybody is staying safe. We're asking uh, more Cardinal-related questions today, but first a little words of wisdom from Sally. Today I'm going to give a quote from Stan Musial. What I try to do is never hurt anybody else, and I figure if I don't, then I'm not likely to get hurt myself. I thought that was kind of interesting because, of course, he's referring to his physical injuries, but this is a good quote for life, basically. If we try not to hurt others, if we try to see the good in others, chances are we're going to give off positive countenance and mm -hmm. others will see the good in us. So it's kind of important when we're cooped up now and we're everything's so much different than it is. People are doing business Zoom conferences where you might have just worked in your office and walked over to talk to a coworker. Now the whole office is staring at you or whatever. Maybe if we just all try to look at each other in a different way, in a more positive way, maybe, we're all just trying to get through this together. Exactly. And that's what we've been trying to do by these questions. Questions and answers are a little trivia game here. So play along with us again today. These We're asking cardinal-related questions today. So you can either jot down your answers on a piece of paper or just think about them as we ask the question. We'll go through all the questions and then give you the answers. And so. before we get to our quiz, I have a few more questions for you. Yesterday, okay. I gave you a lightning round. And I think sometimes people are interested in some of the things you do that maybe don't make the big the big stories or whatever. So why don't you give us your memories on the Bruce Souter trade when he went to the Braves, like where you were well, and how it happened. it was happened. a free agent signing, not a trade. And he, we were at the winter meetings in Houston, and we got word that he was going to be in Atlanta to sign with the Braves. So we hopped a quick flight to uh, to Atlanta, spent out the next day, camped out at the CNN uh, headquarters waiting for uh, some kind of an announcement. Craig Sager was just getting started at CNN, and he was very kind and accommodating to uh, all the media people who were, who were there, bringing us bottles of water and uh, things like that. It was crazy. Just all everybody's just crowded out in front of the little CNN. Now it's not the now yeah, it's the it massive a little, building. Little white one story white building out in the county somewhere out in the suburbs of Atlanta. But you never know what you're going to be doing. You were at the winter meetings, and yeah, all of a sudden Houston. you're so on a got, plane. The, got the word that uh, he was going to be there. So we so tell a little bit there. about the Jack Clark trade now. Yeah, the Char Clark trade was we got a tip that uh, that they were going to make that trade, and and uh, but there it was held up by the fact that Jack had a uh, a loan from the Giants that had to be replay repaid before they could approve the trade, and we had you know kind of con confirmed both with both sides that uh, that the trade was happening from from sources, but uh, I so wrote that that was going to happen. The oddest part about that was that one of the players who was involved in the trade was Dave LaPointe, who was a, at the time a good friend of ours, and he still is for that matter, and we'd actually just been at a Super Bowl party at his house like two or three days before that, so I had to call him and tell him that I'm writing a story in the newspaper tomorrow that he's about to be traded to the Giants, so I didn't want him to read it in the paper first. But then uh, that when actually the trade actually was made, it was the official, Whitey was the manager and the general manager at the time, and he was still living in Kansas City, so I called him on the phone and said, hey, I understand that the, uh, the trade is now official, can I get a comment from you on it? And his exact quote was, you've had everything in the goddamn newspaper all week. I don't know why you want to talk to me now. So, <laughs> so that was that was my memories of that trade. <laughs> well, talking about going to that Super Bowl party at uh, LaPointe's house, it just kind of brings it that the players are just normal people, the players, the managers and stuff. <coughs> and uh, tell about some of the people you've run into at stores and various Well, times. I remember Danny Cox uh, walking up behind us at Kmart in St. Petersburg and scaring the life out of us because he was like, hurry up, let's go get moving. He was a big old hulking guy, as everybody knows what Danny Cox was. And, I remember, and then when you realized it was Danny Cox, yeah, you're like, what are you down. doing at Kmart? Yeah. And then I remember uh, running when we were out in Arizona one year for uh, spring training, covering the uh, baseball out there when I was with Baseball Weekly, at uh, shopping at the dairy aisle at uh, Albertsons, and who walked up there to getting a gallon of milk was Dusty Baker. So we had a nice little chat with Dusty. Yeah, that was interesting. And then, of course, <laughs> people in St. Louis run into Whitey and Mary Lou Herzog mm -hmm. at various times. We used to see them all the time at Shop and Save, mm -hmm. but now Shop and Save is out of business. Yeah. But Okay, so I just thought I'd throw in a few questions every once in a while. Yeah, those are good. Now we can get to all our... Right, on to the trivia. Question one. Who was at the plate when the famous Rally Squirrel made his appearance during a 2011 Division Series game against the Phillies? Who was the batter at home plate when the Rally Squirrel showed up in 2011? Number two, what former <coughs> Cardinal threw the first pitch at the current Bush Stadium when it opened with a game against Milwaukee in 2006? Mm -hmm. I want to mention about these questions. If you have any questions you would like to submit, go ahead. If you think these are too hard, give us some easier ones. If you think these are easy, give us some <coughs> tougher ones. ones. Yeah. 
Question three, who threw, who threw the last no-hitter by a Cardinals pitcher? This has come up a few times recently because a couple of guys, of Michael Walker has had a couple of, uh, of near no-hitters, so kind of people go back and look at that. But this, uh, this was the last Cardinal pitcher to actually complete a no-hit game. Uh, who was it? All right, here's a question about an umpire. Question four, in a Cardinals game against the Marlins in 1999, Frank Pulley became the first Major League umpire to do what? Okay. Question five, who was the last Cardinal pitcher to lead the National League in strikeouts for a season? The last Cardinal pitcher to lead the National League in strikeouts for a season. Number six, who was the last Cardinal player to hit for the cycle? Last player to hit for the cycle for the Cardinals. Okay. Question seven, I will admit this one is probably a little bit more obscure, and if you know the answer to this, you are ultimately a, a great Cardinal fan. Who was the last Cardinal to wear uniform number five before Albert Pujols started wearing it in 2001? The last Cardinal player to wear uniform number five, it was in 1999 to 2000, two seasons uh, before Albert Pujols wore it in 2001. Yeah, he was running, uh, Rob ran these questions past me. And I'm thinking to myself, some of us people who knew the Leave it to Beaver and huh. Andy Griffith questions may not know these, but oh. a lot of you sports fans will not know all of them. I knew some of them. Question eight. In 2004, the Cardinals had three players who hit 300 with 30 or more runs and drove home in. Runs. Should be home runs, sorry. That's 30 or more title. home runs and drove in more than 100 runs. One was Albert Pujols, named the other two. You want to clarify it better? Yeah, I, it's my typing mistake. 2004, Cardinals had three players, did 300, 30 or more home runs, and drove in more than 100 runs. One was Albert Pujols, named the other two. Okay. Question nine. What record does So Taguchi, the former Cardinal officer from Japan, hold for the Cardinals, which can never be broken but only tied? The record that So Taguchi has for the Cardinals that can never be broken but only tied. That's a really good question. Thanks. What two players did the Cardinals trade to the Cubs in 1980 to acquire closer Bruce Souter? A third player was added to the deal later. Mm -hmm. Question 11. What pitcher was on the mound for the final pitch of the 2011 World Series? Question 12. Who was the only person honored with a retired number who never played with or managed the Cardinals, and what is that number? Okay. And we passed the, it every day when we went to the mm -hmm. ballpark. And the final question for this uh, day's trivia, since 1998, Cardinals AAA affiliate has been the Memphis Redbirds. Where was the Cardinals' top farm team between 1982 and 1997? Final top, far, far, top far, Cardinals farm team between 1982 and 1997, before they moved that franchise to Memphis. All right. Who was uh, well, at the answer. bat when the rally squirrel hit? Skip Schumacher. I think everybody remembers that. When that happened, crazy, crazy day. All right. Former what? Cardinal threw the first pitch. It was Mark Mulder. Mm -hmm. Didn't throw a whole lot of pitches for the Cardinals, but he threw that historic one. Last Cardinal to uh, throw a no-hitter was Bud Smith, a uh, rookie pitcher against the Padres in San Diego, September 3rd, 2001. Of course, the Cardinals have not had a no-hitter thrown by one of their pitchers at home at Bush Stadium since Bob Force's second no-hitter in 1983, the only no-hitter that I've ever covered. Of course, Michael Walk has come close, lost two of them in the ninth inning uh, in his, his career at home, but that's the, the last one. An odd fact is the Cardinals have never been no-hit at Bush Stadium since 1919, the last time they were had a no-hitter thrown against them in St. Louis uh, by an opponent. David Palmer of the Expos had a five-inning perfect game one time in the 80s, but that was later ruled to be a, a not a complete game because it was a game that was shortened because of rain, and they changed the rule about which game. You had to throw a nine-inning game to have it count officially. So you're saying the next trivia question will be who's the first person to throw a no-no at this stadium? We haven't had one for the Cardinals? Cardinals haven't had one, and they've not had one against them. They've oh. never, there's not been a no-hitter thrown at, at the current edition. There hadn't been one since, in St. Louis since 1983. Cool. Okay. The Cardinals game against uh, the Marlins 1999, Frank Poli did what? Became the first umpire to use instant replay. He, had to determine, he wanted to determine if he had called a potential home run correctly, so he went to the instant replay. Probably wasn't supposed to do that, but he did anyway. Number five, who was the last Cardinal pitcher to lead the NL in strikeouts for a season? It's not Chris Carpenter. It's not Adam Wainwright. The answer is Jose DeLeon in 1989. Who was the last Cardinal player to hit for the cycle? Doesn't happen very often. Again, it was Mark Grizzlonic, April 27, 2005, against the Brewers at Bush Stadium. The best trivia thing about Mark Rizalonic was one time we saw him play in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania when he had double A with the Expos when he was still at the Expos organization. 
came up with the Expos and just happened to be watching a game on television between the Cubs and the Expos when uh, he came up to bat one time. Harry Carey was broadcasting for the uh, Cubs at the time. You knew he took one look at Grizzlonic's last name and had absolutely no idea how to pronounce it. And I just kind of watched and waited to see what he was going to say, and he didn't even try. He called it Mark G the whole time. <laughs> I remember that. Who was the last Cardinal to wear uniform number five before Albert Pujols started wearing it in 2001? This was your obscure one. Yeah, the answer is Thomas Howard, who was an outfielder for two seasons, 99 to 2000. You may remember Ron Gant wore that uniform for three years, 96 to 98. But uh, the correct answer is Thomas Howard. I remember Mike Ramsey wore it years ago, mm -hmm. didn't he? Yes, back in the 80s. Now, 2004, the Cardinals had three players who hit 30 or more home runs, hit 300, and drove in more than 100 runs. They were called the MV3. Of course, well, the answer other than Albert Pujols was Jim Edmonds and Scott Rowland. Now all of them are in the Cardinals Hall of Fame. Correct. Well, Pujols isn't yet, but he will be when he gets done playing. Oh, that's true. That's true. Number nine, what record does Sotoguchi hold for the Cardinals, which can never be broken but only tied? They wore the highest uniform number in team history at 99. Until they go to triple digits, which I don't think they'll ever do, uh, nobody can ever have a higher number. They, they don't have a rule about that, or they just don't? Nobody has ever done it. I, I mean, I mean, they haven't done it in football. I, I just don't yeah. see, there's no real way to put three numbers on there. Now, now playing left field for the Cardinals, number 102? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> number 10, what two players did the Cardinals trade to the Cubs in 1980 to acquire Bruce Souter? And then there was a third player that was added to the deal the, later. The two at the time in December of 1980 were Leon Durham and Kenny Reitz. And then they later added Ty, a couple weeks later, added Ty Waller to complete the trade. What pitcher was on the mound for the final pitch of the 2011 World Series? Jason Mott. And it was a fly ball to left field caught by Alan Craig. What? Who was the only person honored with a retired number who never played with the car or managed the Cardinals? What is that number? It's 85. And it was honored and retired in honor of owner Gussie Bush. For, if you said 42, that was retired throughout baseball in honor of Jackie Robinson, but it was also retired for Hall of Famer Bruce Suter here in St. Louis. Yep, and at 85, we saw it every day when we walked through that one hall at Bush, mm -hmm. it was at Bush 2. Mm -hmm. Of course, 10, knew, no, the two who are honored for managing the Cardinals who retired numbers in number 10 for Tony La Russa and 24 for Whitey Herzog, even though they didn't play for the Cardinals. And the 1998, the Cardinal AAA affiliate uh, has been the Memphis Redbirds. The Cardinals' top farm team between 1982 and 1997 was in Louisville. We had a great trip to Louisville one time. A. Ray Smith, the owner of the uh, Louisville Redbirds, and Lee Thomas was a farm director at the time, took us to Churchill Downs. I remember sitting there having a mint julep while we were watching the horse races at Churchill Downs. So that was a, a great trip, a great fun fun memory. So that's today's edition of uh, Weathering the Storms of Life with the Rangers. All Cardinal-related questions. We'll be back with another show tomorrow here on stlsportspace.com, also on rainbowsforkids.org. Thanks for tuning in.